In a chemical reaction, we always write the reactants on the left hand side of the arrow and the products on the right hand side of the arrow. So let's look at one chemical reaction and see how we can write it as a word equation. In this reaction, when magnesium reacts with oxygen, magnesium oxide is produced. So we can write that down as a word equation. Magnesium plus oxygen makes magnesium oxide. So the magnesium and the oxygen are our reactants and the magnesium oxide is our product. We can go further and turn that word equation into a symbol equation. To do that, we need to use the periodic table. On the periodic table, we might be able to find some of our chemicals. For example, if we looked for magnesium, we would find that that is Mg. And if we looked for oxygen, we would find that that is O. So we can start to write our symbol equation by writing magnesium plus oxygen. Now oxygen always goes around in pairs and that's why we write it down as O2. So magnesium, the element from group two, oxygen, the element from group six. However, you could spend all day long looking for magnesium oxide on the periodic table and you wouldn't find it because magnesium oxide is a compound. Magnesium and oxygen have reacted together to make a compound. So this magnesium oxide is made up of magnesium and oxygen. So in order to write this compound as a symbol, we'd have to remember some rules on writing chemical formulae. So here are some common endings for chemical formulae. If your compound ended in the word sulfate, then the ending would be SO4. If it ended in carbonate, the ending would be CO3. Nitrates end in NO3. Hydroxides end in OH. And if your word ends in ide, like ours does, could be oxide or fluoride or chloride, then the ending would be a single element. For example, O, if it's oxide, F if it's fluoride or Cl if it's chloride. So you might want to pause the video there and make a note of those common endings. So some examples then, let's say in our equation we needed to write calcium sulfate as a symbol. We'd need our calcium from the periodic table and then our sulfate ending would be SO4. Sodium carbonate, the sodium we would find on the periodic table and the carbonate ending would be CO3, so we'd find Na2CO3. Potassium nitrate, potassium from the periodic table, and our nitrate ending NO3 would make KNO3. Potassium hydroxide would make KOH, and calcium oxide, for example, would make CaO. So we can start to write the chemical formulae for different compounds, and this will help us write symbol equations. So let's look at the one we were looking at. We were looking at trying to write the chemical formulae for magnesium oxide to complete our symbol equation. So we'd already got the reactants part, Mg plus O2, and we need to make magnesium oxide. So it ends in ide, you can see that here, and we're looking at oxide, so we must be ending in O. So our magnesium from the periodic table we knew was Mg, and because of this ending we know that we end in O, so our chemical formula for magnesium oxide is MgO. So here we are writing our equation down as symbols rather than words. But we're not quite finished here. This equation as it stands now is not balanced. We need to balance this equation and the rest of this video is going to run through how we balance equations. So this is where we got to with writing our symbol equation. When you look at each chemical, if there is more than one atom making up that chemical, there will be a small number next to the element. For example, oxygen is made up of two oxygens. 
So there's no number next to magnesium, that means there's just one of them, but we never write the number ones in there. So on this side of the equation, we've got one magnesium atom and two oxygen atoms. However, on this side of the equation, we have, if we look at magnesium, just one magnesium atom and one oxygen atom, so it's not balanced. If I represent these as circles, we're showing that there would be one magnesium atom, two oxygen atoms on the left hand side, which are the reactants, and the products we at the moment are representing this as just having one magnesium atom and one oxygen atom. So this is the problem we need to tackle. We need to make sure that there are the same number of atoms of each element on each side of the equation. So what I recommend you do when balancing equations is draw a line down by the arrow so you'll know you're looking at two different sides. Write down all the elements you have and do this on the same order on the left and the right. So we've got magnesium and oxygen and it will always be the same on the right hand side, magnesium and oxygen. Then write how many atom we have. So here we only have one magnesium but we have two oxygens. On the product side we have one magnesium and one oxygen. So clearly the problem is with balancing these oxygens. Now the really important rule that I want you to remember is when balancing an equation the only place you can put numbers is in front of the chemical. So we can't add any small numbers like this. The only place we can put numbers is in front of the whole chemical. So if we work on this one, if we need two oxygens on this side, if we put a number two here, it will double everything up. So now we've got two lots of magnesium, so we'll change that to a two. And now we've got two lots of oxygen, so we'll change that to a two. So what we've done is we've balanced the oxygens now, which is great. But the problem is the magnesiums are now not balanced. So now we need to try and get two magnesiums on this side. The only thing we can do is put a number in front of the chemical. So if we put a two here, we would now have two lots of magnesium, like so. And now our equation is balanced. So to write that out again for you, it would be 2Mg plus O2 makes 2MgO. And if we were to represent this in circles again, what we're saying is by putting that 2 here, we're now doubling up the magnesium that we've got. So we had one before, now we've got another one. O2 stays the same, O2, two lots of oxygen atoms. But now we've doubled up the magnesium oxide. So whereas before we just had one, we've now got two lots of magnesium oxide. So why do we do this? Well, the mass of the reactants always has to equal the mass of the products. So for example, if we had 50 grams of reactants, we must be turning that into 50 grams of products because the mass needs to be the same. So by balancing the equation, we are showing that no atoms are made or lost in a chemical reaction. Whatever you put in, for example 50 grams, must be the same as whatever you get out of the reaction. That's why we must make sure that we're balancing our equations. So I'm going to go through another work example and then there's a few for you to try at the end of the video. So methane plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide plus water is our word equation. As a symbol, it is CH4, which is our methane, plus oxygen, makes carbon dioxide and water as symbols. However, at the moment, this is not balanced. We've got one CH4, which might look something like this, represented as circles, reacting with oxygen to make CO2 
plus H2O. But you can see already there's two H's here and there's four over here. There's two oxygens here and there's three on the right hand side. So we must have to balance this equation. So remember, when you balance an equation, the only place you can put numbers is in front of the chemical. Remember to divide the symbol equation with a line, so you know to work on the left and then the right. We're going to write each element that we've got, which is all of the capital letters, so C, H and O, and in the same order on the right hand side, C, H, O. So now we look for the little numbers. Next to this C, there's nothing, so that just means there's one of them. We've got four H's and two O's. And on the right hand side, we've got one C, one carbon. We've got two hydrogens. And for the oxygen, we need to look carefully because there's oxygen here and there's oxygen here. So we need to add all of them up. We've got two here and one here, so that makes three all together. So now let's look at what we should balance. If you've got even numbers to balance, that's always a little easier than trying to balance an even and an odd number. So I'm going to start here and try and balance the hydrogens. So we've only got two on the product side, but we've got four on the reactant side. So I'm going to look where my hydrogen is, and only in front of the chemical, I'm going to put a number 2 to double everything up. So now I've got 2 times 2 hydrogen which is now 4 so I'll correct that and now I've got 2 lots of oxygen but I need to remember to add it to the 2 that's here. So I've got 2 times 1 oxygen so 2 in water now and I've got 2 here so now I've got 4 all together. So now I'm happy that my carbon is balanced, there's one of each of those. I'm happy that my hydrogen's balanced. And now I need to concentrate on balancing the oxygen. So I've got four on this side and two on this side. So what I'll do is I'll put a number two in front of the oxygen here, and that will double it up and give me two times two, which is four oxygen. So now I'm happy that everything is balanced. So written out nice and neatly, we'd have two oxygen and we'd have two water. And that would be our balanced equation to make sure we are showing that no atoms are gained or lost in the chemical reaction. And if we are to show this as our little atom circles, we have one lot of CH4. We now have two lots of oxygen one lot of CO2 and two lots of water and now we've got the same number of atoms of each element on each side so we have balanced the equation showing that no atoms are lost or gained in the chemical reaction. So here are some balancing equations for you to try. What I recommend you do is pause the video and then when you press play I will go through the answers with you. So for the first one, as I recommend, separate the reactants and products with a line. Write down the elements that you've got, so CA and O, same on both sides, and count the number of atoms of each element you have. So we've just got one calcium, so we'd write one, two oxygen. On this side, we've got one calcium and just one oxygen. So the calciums are balanced at the moment, so what we need to focus on is the oxygens. So the only place we can put our number is in front of the chemical and we need to double up our oxygen. So we put a two here, but now we've got two calciums. So we correct that, it's no longer balanced. And we've got two oxygens, correct that. So our oxygens are now correct. However, our calciums are now unbalanced, so we need to put a 2 here to then have two calciums on either side. We don't need anything in front of the oxygen. So well done if you got your answer 2Ca plus O2 
makes two CaO. For the next one, again separating our reactants and products, writing all our elements down. Same on each side. And counting up. So we need to look at the whole left hand side. So there's only one hydrogen I can see, one chlorine, two sodium, one carbon and three oxygen. On this side, how many hydrogen have we got? Well, we've got two here. Chloride, we've just got one. Sodium, we've got one. Carbon, we've got one. And oxygen, well, there's one here and there's two here. So we've got three all together. So let's look at the thing that's that need balancing. So we've got an unbalance here for sodium and we've got an unbalance here for hydrogen. So we need to double up the sodiums on this side. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to put a two in front of sodium chloride because the only place I can put a number is in front of the chemical. So that would make two Na and now we've got two Cl. So looking at the rest of the things we've got to balance, sodiums are now balanced and the chlorine and the hydrogen are still unbalanced. So look on this side, I find this chemical here that has hydrogen chlorine in. So we double the amount of hydrogen and double the amount of chlorine. So if I put a two here, I now have two hydrogen and two chlorine. And now my equation is balanced. So very well done if you got the answer 2HCl plus Na2CO3 makes 2NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Now the final one was a little bit tricky. So again we separate the reactants and products, write down our elements and so far it looks pretty straightforward. Counting them up we've got one sodium, two oxygen, two sodium and one oxygen. So I'm just going to look at the sodiums. I need double the amount here so I put a two here and now they are balanced. However I need to also balance up the oxygens. So I need double the amount of oxygens here. Remember the only place I can put this number is in front of the whole chemical. So I have to put it here and I need to double it up. So two Na2O. But now I've now got 2 times 2 which is 4 sodiums on this side and I've got 2 oxygens like so. So I thought I'd balanced the sodiums before but now they've become unbalanced again. So I've got 2 on this side and 4 on this side. So rather than having a 2 here if I change this to a 4, I would now have 4 sodiums on the reactant side and 4 sodiums on the product side. So when you get ones like this, it is a little bit of trial and error. You might have to redo things that you thought you'd already balanced. So really well done if you got the answer 4Na plus O2 makes 2Na2O. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSErevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.